We finally got some clarity with the third episode of Sabikui Bisco. Really awesome episode, really getting, again, a lot of clarification on exactly the whole rust versus mushroom thing, which we've already kind of established quite a bit of our uh, theories on essentially what's playing out. But yes, yeah, my thoughts on the third episode, so let's jump into it. You're really happy about this episode overall because it really does feel like that production value is kind of coming back up. So I had my I had my fears that were building with the second episode, but it looks like they alleviated a little bit of that coming into third episode. So it's good there. But yeah, just a really cool combat sequence that kind of played out very short, but a, a solid combat sequence with some really great music to go in the background as well. I really kind of felt like quite a few points of the combat itself was playing out the music to go in sync with it, which I definitely appreciate. But yeah, through the kind of conversations between both Milo and Jabi, and the other side we have Pawu and Bisco, we get a perspective that, yes, as we predicted, the mushrooms are essentially helping against the rust. We have the rust win that's happening, and the presence of the mushrooms themselves is essentially purifying the rust. But I like that they actually clarified it and essentially why people are misinterpreting the mushrooms being a good thing. And the idea that it takes a while for the mushrooms themselves to really start filtering out the rust. It takes a while for them to build up. But why people feel like the mushrooms were a bad thing was that they were found in very heavy concentrations of rust. Because the mushrooms essentially feed off the rust. So obviously if there's an area with a lot of rust, there's going to be a lot of mushrooms because they feed off of it as everything essentially has evolved differently with this new rust wind obviously a lot of uh, different types of living beings have essentially been extinct by the rust some have evolved including the mushrooms <laughs> and the mushrooms evolved in order to consume the rust. But not only this, but they did get into the rust eater itself, which apparently is this legendary mushroom that appeared once at this one guy's grave. And they felt like this, this rust eater mushroom is essentially the key in order to cure this illness. Now they can still turn it into a conspiracy that the organization, including Kurokawa, is trying to essentially spread propaganda against the mushroom keepers and against the mushrooms. But at least with this perspective, we're getting an idea of where that thought process came from. And I do like that. It's not as simple as big bad guy said mushrooms bad, thus mushrooms bad. At least there's a reason why people would believe that. And that's because of this concentration of mushrooms around areas that have a lot of rust. And I like that it gives a perspective that going forward, obviously this isn't going to be an easy ride. Even Bisco himself is mentioning the idea that everybody is kind of stuck on this. Like this is something that nobody is going to accept these mushrooms as being the cure for this because it, it's been ingrained upon them that this is the cause. And there's no real easy fix to changing people's mindsets. This is what's kind of been established. And so for them to even change the minds of people is gonna be very difficult. And I think even Javi himself says it's a, it's an uphill battle because one, mushroom keepers aren't very sociable people, but at the same time, there's also bad mushroom keepers. So even Javi himself is saying that there's a lot of people out there that are just going for profit. So them distributing this way of curing it, they're seeking gain by it, monetary gain, which I think will probably play back into the mayor and possibly why he wanted Bisco taken down so badly. He doesn't want the standard population to know about this when possibly those that are rich probably already know. But like I said, we had this fight between Bisco and Pawu, which was really awesome. Like I said before, the, the music kind of ramping up in the middle there was really great. Uh, Bisco really acknowledging the idea that Pawu, despite the fact of how inflicted she is, she's still able to fight as well as she did is pretty admirable. But still in the end, kind of <laughs> keeping her uh, preoccupied with conversations about Milo and stuff, eventually realizing that Yes, her weapon has kind of been infected by these mushrooms and she he gets that sleeping shot in and takes her out. And then we, of course, yes, as kind of predicted, <laughs> get the conversation between Milo, Bisco and Jabi as we find out that Jabi is going to stay behind. He claims that he's so injured he wouldn't be able to get out of there. So he's going to stay behind and Bisco's like, you know, I need you. And he's like, no, you have Milo now. And yes, <laughs> Milo's like, yeah, sure. I want to join you. <laughs> it was like, no, there was no real uh, talking Milo into it. He was already pretty much set on that he's going to go on an adventure with Bisco and try to find this rust eater to help his sister out. And he feels like being with Bisco is the best way to find that remedy that he needs so bad, which we all kind of assuming Pau's not going to stay behind. <laughs> the moment Pau wakes up, she's going to jump on her motorcycle and she's going to be gone. She's going to be chasing right after you. So I thought we were done with the whole backstory stuff, but apparently they wanted to show us one more scene of Bisco telling these guys to fertilize this mushroom with the hippo dung in order for it to to grow but I, I guess we're hopefully now we're done with the backstory stuff I mean it, it just feels like this point it's so jarring to the rest of the story I keep thinking you know 
every time it happens, I think like the day it's passed and it's the next day. But oh no, never mind. It's still back here where Bisco first went past this checkpoint. They also did acknowledge the idea that Pawu is still saveable. Um, or at least that's what Bisco says. Like, give give her this injection that I gave you because it's she's not that bad. She's not that far off. Obviously, Jobby, they're establishing at this point, he's done. Like, even if he were to remove the curse of the disease, he's only got a month to live. So that's obviously why Jobby wants to have, you know, Bisco take Milo and continue on. He wants somebody to take over from where he left. Thankfully, we got more of Chiruru. Chiruru looks like, again, she's really wanting to get out of this situation. Uh, again, I'm really kind of expecting her to continue on and follow Bisco as they leave. Um, I don't know if she's going to be involved with the later scene of this episode, because obviously, as we see Bisco and Milo travel on, uh, Milo is kind of giving Bisco a lot of insight into the history, because obviously Bisco has never been to school. Talking about this Nico War Memorial, which is essentially is a shrine that is kind of built with the, the rusted remains of different tanks and stuff. And eventually, at some point, this whole thing just builds up out of the ground. <laughs> so we have some, probably some lobster creature or something that's going to be, you know, having this entire memorial on top of it. But again, I'm not sure if that'll be Chiruru or not. But yeah, that that was, that was interesting. It's obviously, and again, technically based off the OP, this is a world that has some very strange creatures in it. And I can probably contribute that to the fact that this is a world that has evolved from having this rust wind. And so maybe that the aspect of this environment being so much different. Again, mushrooms are growing really crazy different. They are absorbing this rust wind. But at the same time, you can probably see a lot of the creatures of this world being different as well, including this big gigantic crab and whatever the heck's underneath this entire shrine. I'll be curious to see if anything else comes from the um, inclusion of the whole monkeys, because obviously the monkeys are an aspect of see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. And they kind of point this out to being a part of this, the military before the downfall. And that it was a phrase that was brought in by the watch. Obviously, the concept of the three monkeys being around the idea of not looking at what is contrary to propriety, moving, speaking, and looking not what is contrary to propriety. So basically, accepting what is morally accepted by the group. If I'm gathering that properly, I'm not an expert on it, but that's, I think that's pretty much what they're going with there, which would lend itself to the idea of the state that this particular area is in. But yes, solid episode overall, still loving it to death. Again, getting a lot more, I guess, final clarity as to the whole rust mushroom thing. And again, the start of an adventure, the start of the adventure of Milo and Bisco and hopefully everybody else trailing behind because obviously we can't leave everybody behind. But uh, looking forward to more. Still an awesome series. Loving it to death. Just the, I can't get enough of this world. It's so weird. Again, kind of getting into the, just the, the last scene, having this gigantic thing coming out of the ground. I want to see what it is. <laughs> and it's so weird and I love it. So that's my thoughts on episode three of Sabi Kui Bisco. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment. Let me know what's the episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. Support us on Patreon. I'll throw a tips link in the description below. Definitely appreciate everybody that does. And y'all take care.